Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel where we are going to unofficially do my own epic comic book Wednesday. No, I'm not shooing my way in with Michael K. Vaughn and Steve Donahue. They have a fantastic thing going and they've read far more comics than I ever have. I am just now getting in the starting point of dipping my toe into the world of comics. But I've been reading a fair amount of them lately, and so I'm going to try on Wednesday. Until I run into a point where I have not, either don't have time to make video, or run out of ones that I can talk about until I get further caught up. But right now, I have finished a, a series, a run, so to speak, of comics that I very much want to talk about. And that is... Northlanders. Yes. You may remember, if you've been with this channel for a while, I unashamedly gave the crown to Volume 1 here of Northlanders by Brian Wood as the my best read of the year of last year. It sucked me in and didn't let me go. I spent an entire evening just reading this, and this is not a small volume, this is 400 and some pages, and it just was fantastic. Um, you know, the, some stories were bigger hits than others. Inside this collection there, I think there were five parts to it, and all of them have different artists, so each part has the same artist, but then you get to the next part, and it will have a different artist doing this stuff. And obviously, of course, some of them are going to be better than others, but the one thing that held true all across was that the writing was just fantastic. And the stories that they were telling were very much in line with what I enjoy. I love the Viking era of stuff, the long ships, the, the raiding, the, the shield walls, the, the warrior mentality. That all fascinates me. So it comes as no surprise. Volume 1, I still have very, very, very fond memories of. And the reason why I held off for so long on continuing was because I could find available Volume 3, but I could never find a reasonably priced Volume 2. So I finally went and looked, and I said, okay, well, let's jot down what's, what issues are in Volume 1. Let's look at what issues are in Volume 3, and then take a look at what's missing, so to speak, and figure out what is in Volume 2. Because they have seven smaller volumes. And so let's see what I need to pick up to fill the gaps. And it turned out to be two plus a single issue to fill in those gaps. And the really interesting thing, I'm, I'm guessing volume two is the thinnest of them all, because this metal volume right here, it's got uh, seven issues, and I think five of them, four or five of them, are in volume three. So it's just some of the stuff in here. It is the, um, so it has metal, the sea road, and girl in the ice. So Sea Road and Girl in the Ice were the ones that weren't in Volume 3 or in Volume 1. So I, I read all of Metal in one sitting. Well, not in one sitting, but like I read this compilation and really enjoyed it. Um, as you might infer from the title there of Metal, it, it deals with a blacksmith. And really, really interesting story. Things take some unexpected turns along the way. Let's see if I can find some good. Uh, a lot of work with the um, old ways versus new ways. Christianity creeping in into the society. And this one man, this blacksmith, just rebelling against it. And, and fighting to to keep the woman he loves. And so he, he commits 
an act pretty early on that sets most people against him. Really, really well done. And But I think that my favorite in here was probably The Girl in Ice. I really enjoyed that story, and I think it was either one or two issues long. So just a, a very short one, and an old man who, as you would success, expect from the title here, let's find a page where he, he kind of lives out in the wilderness all on his own, and he finds a girl in the ice. And so you get to follow what happens from that. Really, really enjoyed it. Spend the Immortal was great. <laughs> That's absolutely fantastic. This issue, just in itself, is worth the price of admission. Uh, excellent. Uh, it, it mirrors Legend by David Gemmell. A, a very, very old warrior returning home and finding that it's full of just these young, arrogant pups that are threatening him, his family, and his reputation uh, and his prowess, still in old age, are being put to the test. I think the the single best story arc in all of Northlanders is right here with the Icelandic trilogy. I enjoyed this more than any of the others. And that says a lot because the, the bar's already really high. It, it would be like me telling you my favorite episode of Firefly. Well, I like all the episodes of Firefly. I just happen to like this one a little bit more. I'm telling you my favorite Tolkien book. Well, I like all of the Tolkien books. You know, it, it's a high bar. That's what I'm trying to get across. The Icelandic trilogy is great. It is a multi-generational tale of a family in Iceland. And you get to see lots of passing of time and what they end up dealing with across the years. I don't want to spoil anything with it. But this is, if you check out nothing else Northlanders, I would tell you the, the two purchases to make would be these two right here. Find an issue of Spend the Immortal and pick up the Icelandic Trilogy. That is... If it doesn't suck you in, probably won't pull you in for the rest of it. But Volume 3 did not slouch off either, though. There were some excellent, excellent ones in here, including probably my second favorite story, which was the big one in here. Um, let's see what it says. The Plague Widow. Yes. So, before we get to the Plague Widow, so as I mentioned, there's the the metal in here so that's got the the blacksmith uh, his story kicks this off most of it um, it does have a the viking art of single combat which was an interesting one shot that opens up the volume where you have two warriors fighting <laughs> it is just it's delightful really really enjoyable through. Got a lot of stuff to go through. Here we are. Wait, look at that art. So this is part of the Siege of Paris, which is a, a multi-issue arc uh, about Mads and the priest that owes him Abbo um, and a, a siege of Paris and what, what is happening through all of that and you get some wonderful depiction of the shield wall combat and the, just the grim gritty nature of war yeah. wonderful wonderful stuff but the, the, the real star of the show Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I almost forgot about this. Another single issue, just one shot. Um, guy pursuing a deer. 
just really, really enjoyable. You can see nice depiction of the Northern Lights. Just some great, great artwork along the way. But, uh, Plague Widow, who in the very first issue, her husband, a nobleman, dies of the plague. So you get to experience what ensues from there and how this this woman with a daughter is providing for her family and, and working through all of that. I mean, just great artwork along the way. A great story. I had a hard time putting down Plague Widow when I was reading it. And just... I, I can't get enough of this. I, I cannot recommend... Northlanders as a series. Highly enough. So this is how I went through to, to get my three volumes. If volume two ever comes back at a reasonable price, you know, normal price being uh, volume one, volume three were around $30. And the best I could find for volume two was used for about 110, 120, which is stupid. Don't pay that, please. I don't think it's worth it. I was able to, to get for a little less than the, the 30 would have been to, to make my own volume two. Wow. Might have been just a little over 30, somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, but I would absolutely replace the, the ones that I picked up with volume two. Uh, there we go. There's Northlanders it's by Brian Wood whole host of artists along the way just some delightful artwork it, it ranges all over some of them are probably going to work better for you than others yeah so here in volume one it has dean ormston daniel zazelge david ganfels marion churchland brian kelly all listed as artists so i'm assuming those are the five different arcs that are in here that have different artists so yeah, if you enjoy the Viking era, if you enjoy medieval at all, if you enjoy comics at all, you probably will enjoy Northlanders. And it's a perfect pairing to go along with the saga along that happens every April. And very much a lot of them feel like sagas put into a graphic form, especially the Icelandic trilogy. I want to emphasize that one. That one's great. But Plague Widow could very, very well have been an Icelandic saga, too. So I know a couple of folks have picked it up. Adam from Disheld with Adam White. I know picked up the first volume and enjoyed it quite a bit. And I'm sure a couple other uh, people have probably read it and just haven't had a chance to talk about it. Uh, but if you do pick it up, please let me know. I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Uh, because... It, it sucked me in, and I am sad that there's not more. But this is a set of comics that I know I will revisit time and time again. Because I love the subject matter, and the stories are going to just exist with me for quite some time. And I, I'm excited to, in a couple of years, go back and revisit all of them. And uh, just sit down and just read them one after the other. And have a, a really great week or month of just delving back into those stories so anyway i've gone on long enough that's not bad for time for epic comic book wednesday stay tuned next week when i talk about the joss whedon run of the astonishing x-men which was well i i won't spoil but i enjoyed it a lot um, so i will catch you later